I'm here today to show you the proper use of this microscope, which is Nikon's model E200 laboratory and student microscope. It's a binocular compound microscope. So I'm going to start from the bottom of the microscope and show you all of the different parts of the microscope. Nowadays, most of the microscopes that are being sold are LED bulbs, which is not a bulb actually, it's a light emitting diode, which is a little circuit that takes the place of the bulb. Let me show you how you plug the microscope in. The standard three prong cord gets plugged into the back of the microscope like this. And I wanted to show you what the light looks like when it's turned on. The on off switch on this microscope is right above the rheostat to adjust the brightness. So this is the on off switch and this is the light intensity. You can see the light as I turn the rheostat up and down. So we're going to put the um, field diaphragm unit back onto the microscope like so. You'll notice that this unit has a lens here. And it's very important in a microscope that you keep all of the glass surfaces clean, either clean from dust, but especially from fingerprints. So I'm going to put this on. When I put this on, I could be very um, cavalier about it and just leave it like so. And I don't know if you can tell, but the light is not coming straight up through, and that's because I didn't push this unit on the microscope completely. If you ever take this off, be sure that you push it back on, because if you don't, the image will be severely distorted if you don't, if you don't push it all the way on. I'm going to go on to the, um, the condenser of the microscope. And it's a good name for it, because what it does is takes a, a, a beam of light that would be coming up like this, and maybe you could use that beam of light with the 4x objective, but with the 100x objective that has a very small lens, you want to condense that light into the objective like so. And that's what the condenser does. You can adjust the height of the condenser with a knob on this side of the microscope, okay? And frequently people do drop the condenser down, especially when they have a very low contrast specimen. So that's why it's on a rack and pinion that allows it to go up and down like so. So I'm going to take the condenser off and just show you what it looks like. The condenser has a numbering system on the front of the condenser. The numbering system corresponds to the magnification of the objectives so that you can read the number four there. That's where it should be for the 4x objective. If you went to the 10x objective, then you should close it down a little bit more to the 10x objective. It says number 10, that's for the 10x objective. Likewise for the 40x objective and the 100x objective. When you close that down, it adds a little bit of contrast to the specimen because even if the specimen is stained, a lot of times we need to add contrast to the image. And this numbering system, they have matched it perfectly to the um, objective magnification so that you get the optimum contrast for each objective. It's important that when you first use the microscope that the aperture diaphragm be fully open. When you turn this lever to the right, you can see it closing down. And what you want to do when you start using the microscope is have it all the way to the left so that you're getting all of the light up to the specimen. The next thing we're going to talk about is the stage yeah. of the microscope. The stage is the device that accepts the slides and allows you to move the slide in an XY direction with its low drive XY shaft right here, okay? The stage is also graduated. There are gradations on the side here and in the back of the stage, and its only purpose is that if you find something on a slide that you, it's very interesting and you wanted to show a uh, colleague, you could denote the, the location of it, that's the purpose of a graduated mechanical stage, which these microscopes have. We're going to talk a little bit about the nose piece of the microscope. This is the device that allows us to attach the microscope objectives, individual objectives, to the microscope. This is the primary imaging lens of the microscope. It's called the objective. And on this microscope, as is on most biological microscopes that you'd find in a university or in a hospital laboratory, for that matter, the magnifications are 
the 4x objective, 10x objective, 40x objective, and 100x objective. Now that isn't the total magnification of the microscope. The total magnification of the microscope is the objective magnification times whatever eyepiece you're using. And most microscopes come with 10x wide field eyepieces. Okay? The binocular body, to adjust your interpupillary distance, how far apart your, your pupils are, you simply just grab the bi each half of the binocular body and rotate it like so until it's very comfortable that you see one image of the specimen. There's one thing that's very nice about these eyepieces, and that is that they're called high eye point eyepieces. They make the image formed out of the eyepiece about a half an inch out of the eyepiece, and that means that you can accommodate eye spectacle wear, as they call it, eyeglass wear. So I can wear my glasses very nicely, and because of that, we have coated the top of the eyepiece with a sort of rubberized material so you won't scratch your glasses. So that's a very nice feature. You can keep your glasses on. The eyepieces, these 10x wide field eyepieces, it's very important that they are set at the proper height. Do you see that both of them are focusable? You should have them un unscrew the eyepieces all the way up to the top, and then you will see a groove around the eye tube and then screw them in until you can just barely see the groove on each eye tube. And that means the eyepieces is set properly. Now, if you're not wearing your glasses and you're nearsighted or farsighted in one of your eyes, you will not be able to leave both eye tubes exactly at that line. The proper way to do this would be to, at the 10x objective, focus on something, put something in the field, center of the field of view, and focus on something with the 10x objective using your right eye, which is set at that line. And then, trying not to close that eye, but looking predominantly with the left eye, bring that eye into focus like you have with the right one. So now you have one eye that is, one eye piece that is set at that line, and the other one, may be set just a little bit off if you're nearsighted or farsighted. That means that when you go from one objective to the other, the objectives will be par focal, which means they'll be in focus. With the 4x objective, I go up to the 10x objective, I don't have to refocus. I go to the 40x objective, I just have to touch it just to here to bring it perfectly in focus. Modern day microscopes are almost perfectly par focal. When you go from one objective to another, if you have set the microscope up properly, they will be perfectly in focus. I think we've talked about everything on the microscope. Well, maybe, maybe one thing we haven't talked about is um, the fine and coarse adjustment of the microscope. That's the thing that makes the stage go up and down so you bring the microscope in focus. So there's a coarse knob on this side, and there's a fine adjustment after you get it up where you think you might be close, then you can fine adjust it with the fine adjustment here. There's two fine adjustments, one on either side. The reason why there is only one coarse adjustment is because they had to have room for the low drive stage. They thought it was very important to have the, 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 the drives of the stage as close to the table as possible so that it would be comfortable to use the microscope that way. Now that we've talked about all of the parts of the microscope, we're going to talk about using the microscope. So when you first get the microscope, maybe you'll be asked to get the microscope out of the um, cabinet. It'll come with a cord. Of course, you're going to have to plug the microscope in, and it's a standard computer type three-prong cord that will plug into the back of the microscope. Okay, Turn it around so it's very comfortable for you. And on the right-hand side of the microscope is the on-off switch. Okay. You don't have to worry about the intensity of the light. You can turn the switch on anytime you want, whether it's turned all the way up or down. You can see it getting brighter as I turn it up. Make sure that the condenser on this rack and pinion on the left-hand side of the microscope, that the condenser is racked all the way up. Take your slide. Open the finger arm by using the little lever here on the side and put a slide on. 
the first thing you should do after you've put the slide is make sure that the cover slip is right underneath the objective, starting with the 4x objective, which is the shortest objective on the microscope. Rack the stage up all the way until you feel a little bit of resistance. Now, adjust your eyepieces so that you see only one image in them, in the eye tubes. If you move the slide slightly while looking in the microscope, you will see probably a little bit of dust moving. If you do see that, that means that you're pretty close to being in focus. And then use the course adjustment a little bit to drop, drop it down until you see the image. Now we've got the slide. We have found the specimen using what we call the scanning lens. After that, we're going to go to the 10x objective and refocus a little bit. We have this specimen on this stage now. And we have the eyepieces set. We started with the 4x objective. We went up to the 10x objective in focus. We're going to go up to the 40x objective. Focus is beautiful. None of these objectives, 4, 10, and 40, require immersion oil. Those are called dry objectives. You will notice one thing that we talked about before, and that is the working distance with the 4x, very large working distance. 10x, much shorter working distance. That's the distance between the specimen and the front lens of the objective. 40x, less than a millimeter working distance. Now we're going to the 100x objective. And that is an oil immersion lens. You have to use immersion oil, which comes in a little bottle like this. You have to use immersion oil between the slide and the objective. And this is how you do it. You go from the 10 to the 40. You're in focus. Now we're going to go to the 100. You move the 40 out of the way just a little bit, and you put a drop of immersion oil on the slide right where the light is coming through the condenser. And you move the 100x objective into the immersion oil and past the immersion oil, like so. And what you're doing is getting any air bubbles out of the immersion oil. Now when I look in here, I'm in focus. I am now looking at 1,000x magnification with a 100x oil immersion lens, which has been immersed in oil. What's very important about this 100x objective is, is that after you get through using the 100x objective, that you clean it off. So after I get through observing with the 100x objective, what I should do is rack the stage down, take the slide off and clean it with alcohol. Now the objective has to be cleaned, and this would be a good way to do it after every session with the microscope. Take lens paper and wipe the oil off the 100x objective like I'm doing now. Every once in a while, the objective needs probably a little bit more attention than that, but the technician will clean the objective by take, removing the objective from the microscope and cleaning it a little bit. The normal user can do this and wipe the oil off the objective like that. Now that I'm through using the microscope for today, and we're going to store it, perhaps in a cabinet. Simply turn the microscope off and unplug it from the back of the microscope. The microscope comes with a built-in recession here, which is used for carrying the microscope. Pick up the microscope with one hand in the rear of the microscope in this indentation. Uh, and put the other hand underneath the microscope in the front and carry it this way, OK? Always carry it with two hands. For further information, um, there, Nikon does have a website that you can go to, and it's www.nikonusa.com.